Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. Welcome to my playthrough of Red Dead Redemption 1 on the PS4. Uh, sorry I uploaded this kind of late today, guys. I've just been busy with a bunch of things. But I'm gonna start off this video right now telling people do not buy this. I know I have this here, but I only- I have this game only for two reasons. The first reason is because I want to show you guys a comparison. So later tonight, I will be doing a comparison video. I'll be comparing the PS3 and the PS4 version gameplay-wise, graphics-wise, cutscene-wise, side-by-side. So just check, check out that video later on if you want to see what they look like side by side. And the second reason is because I was going to do a playthrough of Red Dead Redemption this year. So this year I, I was going to do a playthrough of the first Red Dead. A lot of people have asked for a playthrough of the first Red Dead. And I was thinking, you know, since it's coming out on PS4, I might as well do it on here just to see if there's any difference whatsoever uh, while doing my playthrough. But I'm telling you guys, don't buy this. If you want to see what the game looks like, you know, just watch it on, on my end. But I'm telling you guys, you know, it's not going to be any really any different whatsoever. You know, there's not even any multiplayer player in this version, um, which I'll have a video on the multiplayer in the original Red Dead Redemption up in the, in the future, but, um, you know, hope you guys like my cosplay here, I tried to do John Marston's outfit, you know, he does, like, you know, kind of the, um, uh, tan button shirt, he has kind of, like, that ripped vest, which I have right here, um, uh, the, um, I tried my best on the hat, I know the hat is a little bit different, but it was very hard for me to find that exact type of hat that he wears, um, but anyways, um, let's continue on, uh, here, let's, let's do a playthrough of this, let's see what this is like, then. And uh, I will have another GTA money guide up tonight also, by the way, guys, for this event week. It'll just be up really late tonight because I've just been busy with a bunch of stuff. Yeah, so the logos are the same when the game first starts up. It's the um, uh, same. That's new. Double Eleven is the studio that did this. Um, uh, normal, hardcore, undead nightmare. We'll do hardcore. Uh, would you like create a new save game? You know, this game should have been under twenty dollars. There's no reason this game should have been fifty bucks. Uh, This takes place four years after Red Dead Redemption 2, by the way. Yeah, not seeing any difference between the original. And, um, I'm gonna talk about history a lot while I do this playthrough, you know, um... I'll make sure to I'll make sure to um uh cu talk about like the history of this time period a lot when I'm playing through this. I'm grateful, Mrs. Bush, that they are finally bringing civilization to this savage land. I could not agree with you more, my dear. My daddy settled this land, and I know he'll be looking down on us, pleased at how we helped the natives. Yes, they've lost their land, but they've gained access to heaven. 
Uh, that's actually not true. Um, uh, Native Americans were. Unless an innocent receives communion, they're destined to go to hell. It hardly seems fair. What I mean to say, Jenny, is that there is a great deal of difference between an innocent and a savage. I never thought of it that way. Yes, they lived like animals, but they're happier now. You can tell that John's a bit pissed off too, because one of his best friends was Charles. Uh, but um, what I was saying is that Native Americans actually did not become U.S. citizens until the 1920s. A lot of people don't know that. We will be able to fly. No, only angels can fly, Jenny. No, no, apparently people can fly. Didn't you hear? Out in Kansas, a man even got a car to fly. <laughs> I hardly think so, Jenny. Apparently, Mr. Johns wants to run for governor, which is why he's so concerned with cleaning up the state. Nate Johns, yes. His family is nothing but hillbilly trash that came here after the war. I don't want to be judgmental, but this state should not be ruled by such a disgusting family. A family without class. Apparently. The John's family have made a lot of money, and he has a lot of friends in politics. Mrs. Bush, money isn't everything. There are many things that money cannot buy. It seems that money can buy voters, though. What you must remember, my dear, is that we have been brought here to spread the word. And the word and civilization, they are the same thing. They are the gifts. It is the opportunity we have, the chance to live among people who are decent and who do not kill each other, and who let you worship in peace. Oh, it, it's so confusing, Father. Sometimes I find it impossible to make the distinction between a loving act and a hateful one. I mean, they often seem to be the same thing. Yes, Jenny, it, it is confusing. But you only have to ask me if you need help. Indeed. Well, here we are, Mrs. Bush. <gasps> Armadillo. So a lot of these um, uh, characters you will see in the, sing uh, in the story later on, or you will see them as random strangers. So a few of those characters you'll see as random strangers later on. Uh, yeah, Armadillo does not have, um, uh, does not have the cholera outbreak anymore. So this is Red Dead Redemption on the, um, yeah. And you can just tell the running animation just feels so much different than Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh... I guess we can't buy the newspaper yet, because you can buy a lot of the newspapers in the storyline. Um, you must be John Marston. Sometimes. I'm Jake. Your friends from Blackwater hired me to guide you. Hey, my friends. I'm pleased to meet you, Jake. I got the horses saddled up and ready out front. Uh, let me, um... Yeah, and you can see that multiplayer's already gone from this. Uh... Uh, targeting mode? Hardcore? Uh, uh, let me see here. Where is subtitles? Okay, there we go. Ain't gonna find 30 of horses and these in all of New Orleans. Let's go. Take it easy until we're out of town. Ain't no point in causing a rush.
Yeah, so horse controls are um, uh, very similar to Red Dead Redemption 2. I just haven't played this game in so many years, but... That's right. Ain't taking nobody up to the fort in a long time. Great place for a decent fella to want to visit, if you don't mind me saying. Who said I was a decent fella? It's been abandoned for years now. Folks say it was built during the Mexican War. What kinds of soldiers around back then? Why'd they leave? Well, I ain't entirely sure. I heard they had to go up north to fight Indians or... Maybe they got tired of being soldiers and went looking for gold. You know how things is. So what are you doing up at the fort? I'm looking for an old friend. Well, like I says, you ain't gonna find many folk around those parts these days. Those you do find are about as sociable as an old Serena back to you. <laughs> I mean, I ain't one to judge a man by the company he keeps, but... Well, he ain't been friends for a long time. Yeah, so, um, uh, R New Austin, that is primarily, like, New Mexico and Arizona, a little bit of Texas, and I think you West Elizabeth is supposed to be Texas. Armadillo, Mr. Marston? I doubt it. I ain't planning on staying very long. Well, if you're fixing for some female company, you can do a lot worse than Armadillo. Fine as cream gravy they are. Not like Thieves Landing. Dang, those girls ain't even fit for a drinking man to hold up with. I'm a married man, I'm afraid. Ain't we all? <laughs> a lot of these territories um, uh, used to be part of Mexico, but the U.S. had uh, won it in the uh, yeah, yeah. Mexican-American War. And that's why you'll see, like, you know, yeah. old Mexican, like, oh, Spanish buildings I in, um, uh, in some territories like old. Arizona and New I Mexico, for there. example. Says he got a telegram from some Blackwater big bugs asking for a guy. I guess it's none of my business. That's Fort Mercer right. is an example of that. You ain't very talkative, are you? No. Nope. I'm just chewing the dog, mister. It's how I am. I don't mean nothing by it. Trust me. There's things you're better off not knowing. A waste of good meat. Not far now, Mr. Marston. The fort's just over this hill. Slow it up now. Woo there. Listen, mister. This here is what's left of Fort Mercer. Some gang rode in and took the place over. So I understand. This is where we part ways, friend. You have yourself a good time. <laughs> Come on. Come for you, Bill Williamson. Come out here right now. Go away now, John. Don't make me kill you. Nobody needs to kill anyone, Bill. You must think I was born yesterday. You always did think I was an idiot. Well, because he was. Bill. You were as my brother. I've come to try to save you. <laughs> oh. Do I look like I need saving? Bill, please. They want to kill us all. I can help you. Well, you never tried to save me before. You only seemed to save yourself. Bill. I implore you, think about this. <laughs> you implore me? <laughs> you implore me. You always were one for fancy words. <laughs> oh. Well, things are different now, John. 
Now I'm in charge! No more Dutch! And no more you! <laughs> he implores. I, I implores you to go back and tell them to send someone just a little bit more impressive next time. Well? Uh. Oh. <laughs> Poor Jim. So Bill Williamson is the first antagonist that you ever encountered in the Red Dead Redemption games if you play them, you know, from Red Dead Redemption 1 to Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, but, you know, he was an ally for most of the game in Red Dead Redemption 2, but then, you know, that incident with Micah and Dutch at the end of the game. And Bonnie, if you guys, if, if any of you guys haven't played Red Dead Redemption 1, um, uh, you will remember Bonnie from Red Dead Online. Well, you're alive. So it would seem. So, how do you feel? I don't know the polite word for it. I do. Stupid is the word we use around here. What were you doing? I was, oh, I was doing something stupid. <laughs> well, you'll be okay. Once you didn't die, the doctor said you'd be fine. He got the bullets out a couple days ago. Good. It cost us $15. I'm sorry, madam. Should have left me there to die. Did you want to die? I mean, was that it? Was that why you went straight out to Fort Mercer and picked a fight with the worst bandit in the county? To die, Mr. Er, Mr. Uh, Marston. John Marston. Bonnie McFarlane. Miss Bonnie McFarlane. Well, you may be right, Miss McFarlane. I don't know. Huh. So what were you doing? I was trying to give Mr. Williamson a chance. For old time's sake. You know Bill Williamson? Knew him. Long time ago. Well, what was he like? Dumb. Just like you. Thank you, miss. <laughs> See my hat? I have. And, uh, what will you do now? Now I'm gonna take my time and go after him the less kind way. Well, that sounds very fun, Mr. Marston. Quite heroic, just like in those penny dreadfuls my brother used to read. Meanwhile, if you'll excuse me, I've got a ranch to run. Of course, if you're feeling better, why not take a ride with me later and help me patrol the perimeter? You can earn back some of that money we wasted on doctor's bills. Of course. And thank you for saving my life, I mean. Next time, Mr. Marston, I strongly recommend you don't try to lose it quite so earnestly. I'll bear that in mind. So $15 in that in 1907 would have been over $400 today. So that's how much they spent on the doctor. And even then, you know, $15 for uh, back then for getting out a bullet wound, that would be a lot, um, uh, that's still, you know, $400, that would still be a lot cheaper than what you'd have in modern day. Modern day, that'd be, you're talking thousands of dollars for something like that. Well, I guess it depends on the doctor, but it's, uh... Yeah, he got shot for a Peter. Yeah, even after a few days, he would not be able to run around like this. Um, Mr. Marston, back in the land of the living, I see. Figured it's about time I started paying back that $15. Well, no time to waste. The horses are saddled up over here. Uh, I don't remember if you can explore Bonnie's house in the original one. I'd have to remember that. Um... Foreman's office. It's also where we lock up good for nothing outlaws such as yourself. I'm happy enough with my current quarters right now, Miss McFarland. 
Okay, let's see if you can still ride a horse. Let's make a tour of the ranch so you can get your bearings. Man, I did miss that soundtrack. But still, you know, the original Red Dead Redemption is definitely worth playing. But you won't find Parisian high fashion, but it's good for the essentials. Very convenient. I don't think I've ever seen a ranch with its own store before. Look, if you're gonna be buying Red Dead Redemption, like I said, buy the PS3 version if you have PS3, because you can get Undead Nightmare and multiplayer, which this game doesn't have multiplayer for eighteen dollars. So much I got it for on Amazon. What do you think? I'm no expert, but. It certainly looks like a fine corral. I suspect you've stolen more horses than you've broken. Now where'd you get such an idea? First impressions are hard to erase. It's obvious to Bonnie that he's a former outlaw. That's the train station. Things sure have changed since the line finally got finished. Bringing in all sorts of new folk like yourself. Is that such a bad thing? Change is only good when it makes things better. Complaints from me, Miss McFarland. Yeah, so um a few of these buildings have been added since um uh uh since the original Red, Red, Red Dead Redemption 2, which took place um you know, it was 1907, um uh you know, 1890 um 1899 is when it starts, and then 1907 is when it um uh uh ri oh ride your horse to the Yo. hitching post. Okay. Uh One uh one uh town that's gonna you're gonna notice is very different is going to be Tumbleweed and um and Thieves Landing. How about a cold drink, Mr. Marston? Thank you, ma'am. Getting shot then riding a horse seems to take it out of you. <laughs> I could use a rest. Sure. Come on in. I'll show you the house and then you can sit for a while. Thank you. Mr. Marston. Miss McFarland. Remember me telling you about the trouble we've been having with rustlers and other undesirables? I do. Will you help me keep watch on the property line this evening? Sure. I want to see just who is trespassing on our land. This is a fine weapon. Come, let's head out. The country is really beautiful at around this time. Ready, Mr. Marston? Let's mount up and patrol the ranch. <laughs> Let's go. Keep your eyes open and try not to get yourself shot again. <laughs> Marston, I feel a lot happier someone's along with me. I feel a lot happier now I got a rifle. Well, with your trigger itch and my feminine intuition, we should make quite a team. Look, those damn rabbits are at the crops again. Get down and give me a hand, will you? Get your rifle out. It's about time these little thieves met their maker. Oh, hardcore is, um... Okay, I got that now. Yeah, hardcore is, um... Uh, it looks like that's free aim, which, um, uh...
We've still got plenty of ground to cover. Yeah. If it's not the rustlers stealing our cattle, it's the rabbits stealing our crops. It ain't never easy living off the land like this. Maybe you should move to a big city, become a lady of leisure. Come on, boys. The damn coyotes are fast. We can't afford to lose any more livestock. Kill them, Mr. Marston. Yeah. Okay, I think I got one already. Good shooting, Mr. Marston. Yeah. Guess we'll keep playing with free aim for now. Um. Damn. Uh. Horse can't jump over that? Uh, okay. Looks like that was the last of the coyotes. Just a shame we had to lose any of the chickens. Let's go. I'll take you back to your room. Whoa. You know, you can actually handle a rifle. It's something I've had a little experience in. Maybe Bill Williamson did get lucky after all. Luck didn't really come into it, miss. You're a useful man to have around the ranch, that's for sure. But don't think I've forgotten what brought you here. We'll do whatever we can to help you. I sure appreciate that, Miss McFarland. This is you, Mr. Marston. Oh, okay. Hitch, uh... Mr. Marston. Makes me kind of happy I saved your life. Get some sleep and I will see you in the morning. Good night, Miss McFarlane. You can sleep in the bed in, in your room to save your game. Okay. Yeah, people on farms actually did not sleep, um, uh, you know... People on farms don't sleep as often as people in the cities and in the suburbs. Usually people in the cities and suburbs sleep seven, uh, eight hours. People on farms a lot of times, uh, uh, they, uh, they sleep, uh, you know, five, five to, um, uh, five to six hours. Forms of paper or newspapers, huh? Oh, this is the general store here. I guess we can't go into it. Um. Am I missing a newspaper in this part? Because I would, um... I would like to, um... Uh, I would like to, you know, get all the newspapers that I can when I'm playing through the game. Oh, Mr. Marston. How are you doing today? I'm well, Miss McFarland. Thank you. How are you? Well, I'm fine. Thank you. So, uh, how are your ribs? Fine. A little sore, but apart from a couple extra scars, it'll be as nothing happened. Good. Uh, come in, come in. You know, you never did tell me how you met that Bill Williamson or what you wanted from him. No, miss, I did not. Well, why not, if you don't mind me asking? I certainly don't mind you asking if you don't mind me not telling. See, it's a complicated and somewhat pathetic tale, and by telling you, not only would I be putting your life in danger, but also threatening the lives of some 
people that I hold very dear. Well, I apologize if I seem to be prying. And I apologize for my reticence. Hope you believe me when I say that it's simply out of respect for you. Of course, Mr. Marston. I understand that a city dweller such as yourself likes to have some exotic secrets so us country folk are impressed. <laughs> I'm no city man, miss. Yeah, but I saw you get on the train at Blackwater. You with those gentlemen in bowler hats? I'm still no city man. But I'll bet you can't ride, Mr. Marston. I hate to take money from a lady, miss. <laughs> oh, you won't be. I'll race you right now. If it makes you happy. We'll see. All right, I'll show you how we ride around these parts. Whoa there. So, um... Let's go. On the count of three. Three, two, one, go! I so, um, you're not gonna be a gentleman about this. You don't know me at all, Miss McFarland. Go. I still remember, uh, you know, you you tap X, you know, you you hit X, you lay off for a few seconds, you hit X again. That was, I remember, like the best way to uh, to run with the horse in um in uh, in Red Dead Redemption 1. But um, you know, back then there was a lot of outlaws that uh, you know, these outlaws that would try to, you know, after, you know, they gave up like a life of crime, uh they never got caught. Uh they would try to uh, you know, blend into society and they would try to like, you know, move into other towns typically far away from uh I'm okay like see if win this race here. Stamina on the horse is pretty bad right now, but... This is gonna be close! You'll have to do better than that! Ah, uh, yeah, I'm... Come on. Oh! This damn. Crap. Yep. Yeah, see, that happens. Um, If you wear down the horse's stamina too much. Let's see if I can win this race still. Damn, right then, right then, Redemption 2, you would have gotten knocked off the horse if you hit that sign. I'll get the hang of this. It's a little different than Red Dead Redemption 2, because that's what I'm so used to, because I haven't played this game in so many years. But I'll get used to it again. And wish I'd never gotten thrown off my horse. Yeah, there's no way I'm going to win this race. Now I got the better hang of it here. <laughs> that was fun. Sure. You know, you should go pay the marshal a visit in Armadillo sometime. I'm sure he could help you deal with that nice Mr. Williamson. Yeah, I might just do that, Miss McFarland. You do whatever you think best, Mr. Marston. Yeah, so I will, um, yeah, kind of, I, I, I did, wasn't doing that well in that race. I did pretty bad in it, but I'll get used to this, guys, because it's been, like, it's been, like, you know, what, like, you know, it's been a long time since I played this game, many years. I beat this game when it first came out, so I remember the story fully. It's been a long time since I, um, uh, since I played it. 
Uh, but, uh, I guess we'll wrap it up here. But what I was trying to say during the race is that, like John Marston's example, for, uh, that actually happened where you would have outlaws that would just try to, like, um, you know, I'm not talking about, like, working with the government, like, on some secret mission. I'm talking about more that they would they would move somewhere very far away to some, like, distant town, and they would try to start over again. They would use a fake name. Because uh, a lot of these outlaws, a lot of times, they were actually born in, um, uh, you know, in outlaw camps. And so, because they were born in outlaw camps, there's no registration of them. There's no, you know, um, uh, there's no, they don't have a birth certificate. So they're, you know, they're Americans, but, you know, they haven't, there's no registration of them. So there's no record of them. And so because of that, it's a lot easier for them to blend into uh, society. Um, for example, a lot of people say Jack Marston's getting drafted into World War I, but not necessarily because uh, Jack Marston, he was born in a camp. So the government wouldn't even know who he was unless he registered himself. So the government doesn't really know who Jack Marston is either. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, at least citizenship-wise. I mean, the Pinkertons know, sure, Ross knows, but, like, government-wise, there's no registration of Jack, you know, ever being born. Um, uh, but these outlaws, they would go into, like, you know, towns. They would try to, like, you know, change, like, live a different life. However, though, to the people that live in the town, it would become obvious to them that the person was a former outlaw, even though how much they would hide it. Um, for example, outlaws typically... When they would move to another town to start over, they typically would not have any family with them. You know, Marston is like a rare example of that, but typically when an outlaw would start over, they would not have any kind of family with them. Um, uh, you know, they would not have, you know, they would have a very, you know, um, uh, suspicious past. They would have like a common story they would tell, which wasn't like very believable. Uh, they would use a fake name, like, you know, Jim Milton. That was part a bit re re uh, realistic in Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, the, um, uh, the names that they gave, like, you know, the thing about this is if somebody's calling you by like a, a fake, fictional name like if your name is john but somebody's calling you jim like you know you're not going to react to it as quickly you might eventually get used to it but people catch on to things like that no matter how much people try to hide it people in in the west have really good instinct they have really good you know intuition they're able to like sort things out pretty quickly and you know if you come into the town suspicious you know character you know you have you like you're using a fake name no family you want to move into the town people are going to start asking questions who you are exactly, so people will be able to figure it out. They might not know what outlaw you were exactly, but they'll figure out eventually that you were some kind of outlaw. Um, uh, so uh, it wasn't as easy for them to start over as, as people might think. But I guess we'll wrap it up here, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I'll have the next part for you guys tomorrow. Thank you guys for watching. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful day, guys.